70% of the world they say is covered by water. The other 30% is covered by Ngolo County, defensive midfielder for Chelsea Football Club and winner of the 2021 UEFA Champions League. Welcome. This is the arena. Yes, it's a brand new week. Uh, a week that precedes the exciting weekend. Yes, a weekend that gave us so much issues um, in the world of sports. Issues that we would be talking about on today's show. Issues emanating from the incredible world of sports. Yes, one of which you already know is that one that involves Chelsea and Manchester City. Yes, I know the fans of Chelsea are still excited about that one. We'll take a look at how it went down and the lessons learned from that one. And also, we would be taking a look at basketball on the show today. It's come to a wrap. It's been called, um, it's been closed. Uh, it officially being concluded. And Zamalek are the new champions, or call it the first champions of the Basketball Africa League. The Nigeria Professional Football League is also on the plate for, for today. And also, some other issues we would be taking a look at as regards sporting issues on the show, only to be revealed after this break. I'll be your host on the show today in what promises to be quite an exciting one. My name is Jidechi Chidiyeje. Welcome back. This is the arena. Yes, let's talk about those big, big stories emanating from the world of sports. Like I said, my name is Jidechi Chidese, and on the show today with me is a wonderful sports analyst and a person of Ajori Shekemi. Ajori, it's a pleasure having you on the show Hi, today. Hi, thank you very much. Good stuff you're doing. Let's start off with how your weekend panned out. How did you spend the weekend? <laughs> I was happy. Happy. So you, you already sound like a Chelsea fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man. I was okay. part of it. Good stuff you're doing. Thank you for having me. Mm, definitely. Um, and Jory, we saw, aside definitely the, um, the big one that went down in Porto um, between Chelsea and Manchester City. Let's start yeah. talking about the basketball Africa League. Um, quite the interesting one. We saw how Nigeria Rivers who passed. We are part, was part of the participants at that one. They got knocked out early in the competition. And yeah. on Sunday, it came to a climax. Um, Zamalek of Egypt winning that one. Yeah, um, it was rather unfortunate for um, Nigeria. I expected them to go all through, but then um, Zamalek came up with it. But fair enough, they deserved it. Mm, fair enough, they deserved yeah. it. Okay, um, moving on on the show right now. Joining me uh, would be a basketball commentator in the person of um, Moyo Shola. Moyo Shola is a huge, huge fan of basketball and loves to talk about it. And he's expected to be joining us on the show right now. Well, hello, Moyo Shola. How are you doing? Hello, Moyo Shola. Okay, it seems Moyo Shola is not on the line yet. But moving on, um, Shekemi, yes, uh, let's talk about uh, Zavalek. At, well, particularly the Basketball Africa League. It's quite interesting to see how um, we've, we've, we've had... Uh, we, we saw how it started off, and um, the first one, very first one, right here in Africa, and yeah. it's, it, we saw how it panned out. How would you wrap? How, in one word, what would you say about the Basketball Africa League? Um, it's 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 great to have that kind of thing on the continent. Um, it would help to push out more um, players outside, and I believe that um, we can come up with something good. Mm, come up with something good. He yeah. said, "Okay, Shekemi is on the line now. Hello, uh, Shekemi. How are you doing?" Yeah, good afternoon, Shekemi. Um, Shekemi, let's talk about the Basketball Africa League and the one that got, got wrapped up right there in Kigali, Rwanda. Um, Zamalek, the first, the inaugural winners of this one, a pleasant competition. Um, what, what, what do you have to say about the Basketball Africa League? Well, what I can say is that I think, uh, first of all, I think it's a very good competition. And uh, you know, FIBA and uh, NBA coming together for Africa, more like uh, NBA in Africa. That's why it's that is why it's called the Basketball Africa League. I can tell you for sure that since when that partnership has been in place, uh, there have been so many players that have been you know, that have coming home. Like, for example, like the Ben, ben Uzo now, mm. I think he represented the um, Rivers of Nigeria. 
and but unfortunately um Nigeria uh, Nigeria security couldn't go further in the tournament because you know they they, they went out in the first round of, of the tournament. Mm. I think certainly is, this kind of thing is is being held every year. I think is is the wake up call for African players that are that are dead and are not really doing well they can come back to their to their respective countries and you know this kind of things is very very competitive. I mean, it, it gets the kind of spotlight that the NBA is having. So I, I think it is a very very good one. Also, players that are homegrown, they yeah, they can of course they have something to aspire or to, to look up onto. That is very very good one. Mm. Quickly, let's talk about Zama, like the winners of that one, and also we saw how um, the Patriots of Rwanda came third in that one. They were the, um, came fourth actually in that one, and they were the host. Yeah. Of that one, let's talk about Zamaleka. What do you see as regards that team? And let's talk and um, maybe um, spice it up by talking about the Olympics that will be going on later this year. It's African teams doing so well in that one. Um, do we see this as a representation of what might be happening in the Olympics later this year? Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Zamalek. They are one of the, of course, they are the biggest team in, in Africa. Mm. breaking up uh, but, but quickly let me allow you wrap up by asking um do you actually see nigeria doing so well when it comes to the basketball africa league by the next time we will be represented on the african scene it might be rivers who pass it might be another team but you see a nigerian team possibly possibly um getting to the latter stages of this one and maybe maybe just win it <laughs> Okay, uh, it looks like Moyo Shola is really breaking. Uh, but Moyo Shola, I would say it's really been a pleasure having you on the show today. Yeah, yeah but, but, but I think if our league can be up, uh, up and running, like mm -hmm. some of the best teams went to the men and Okay, Moyo Shola is really breaking up. I think um, it's been nice hearing his voice at this point. But uh, he, he raised quite salient points there at the end. I heard him saying um, how... If our league could be up and running, uh, we could see a Nigerian team doing so well next time. Yes, definitely. Um, you know, it's. I, I feel that um, the more you play, the better you get. You get. So, um, if we have a, a league that is standard enough, we would push our players to um, continent continental games, and they will do well. Why not? Mm, they will do well. Why not? Um, quite the interesting one. Uh, it's been wrapped up. Uh, Nigeria is not on the winning side of this one. Hopefully, we can. Sadly, we can look out for the best. Uh, where we go forward, but let's move on and talk about how Nigerians have been on the winning side. Talk about the athletes and uh, the run up to the um, Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. Let's start off with Ese Brumi this weekend. She shattered the record um, that has been on for 25 long years, uh, breaking that record of Choma Juwa. Uh, quite the interesting one we've seen Ese Brumi, how she's risen up um, through the ranks when she was still a young um, athlete in the game, and now she's one of the biggest in the world. Um, once you could talk about long jump. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, you know, being a three world, um, three Africa champion, mm. I mean, you, you can't expect less from her. You can't expect less from her. She did really well and um, she'll be proud of herself right now and I'm happy for her. Very, very happy. Mm, very happy for her. Yes. Um, but, but let's look at this in terms of the Olympics. Many people are already talking about how um, SC could be doing something magnificent at the Olympics, could we be at this point? Is it too early to be talking about an Olympic gold medal? Because I mean, this is the African record holder you're talking about, and yes. already um, she has the world lead. And once you talk about long jump this year, so far so good, the longest jump ever made this year. 
is by SM Rumi, 7.17 meters. Um, I think um, right now she has, she has the confidence that you will need um, for someone that is going to um, the Olympic to get a gold medal. Mm. So um, I think she, she's, she's in the right place of mind. Mm. And um, having shattered this uh, record we're talking about, ha, come on, she has every reason to um, plan and hope for a gold medal. I am, I'm expecting I, nothing I, less. I, I, another person I, I, I think by now should have most likely gotten a gold medal, but it looks like many times at the Olympics, things don't always go her way. Um, right. Talk about blessing or cabaret. We saw how she gave Shelly Ann Prezier Prize, Prize, the current world um, fastest woman, a run for her money right there at the championships, um, the world championships. And Okabari coming second, does this um, signify that there's the likelihood of Nigeria having the fastest woman? <laughs> um, um, I think it's, it's a step in the right direction. I mm. mean, coming second with um, 10.20, if I'm right, um, I think it's, it's, it's very positive. It's something to take home. It's something, and with the right um, preparation, she can go all the way. Uh, now, you, you mentioned preparation. Yes. Uh, we've seen how these athletes many times complain about preparation. Uh, but recently, the sports minister started a project that I think should be commendable. He said it's the adult and athletes, um, it's an adult the athletes, um, call it whatever it is, yeah. but the fact that an individual, a, govern a state governor, um, a company, a corporate organization gets to adopt an athlete and sponsor um, that athletes for the entirety of the Olympics. With this type of preparation, do we actually see our athletes doing so well? Yes, yes, yes. Because, um, like you said, sponsorship has been has been a very big problem. It has been a, it has been an issue, and um, since we are already trying to address that issue, I feel um, we can do all that it takes to um, push out good results. Go. Um, outside the continent, go outside the country and bring good results back home. Mm. It's, it's very, very nice. Very, very nice. Very nice. Um, finally, let's wrap up talking about this road to the Olympics. Uh, we cannot talk about the road to the Olympics and those who are doing so well right now uh, without talking about the D-Tigress. They started their um, play of the, their training games um, as uh, the run-up to the Olympics has started. And the first one is down. They are able to do it over Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great game they had there. Um, I think we, we have every chance to move very far in the Olympics. I mean, we had, we had a player that just came in for 15 minutes and she was able to get um, like 14 points. That's, that's massive, massive. And I, I hope that they can continue like that. This uh, win will not just be a, um, I hope they won't, they won't go back and relent. They continue to push forward. Mm. Mm continue to push forward well if you're not aware that the tigress they've been um they've been in training for a while now with their new coach um, otis hoogley yeah and we expect that the tigress they will take this form to the olympics the first game was um on friday against puerto rico they have more games to go down and it would be against Serbia and of course belgium those are the other two sides they'll be taking on they've won the first one let's see what will come out of the second and their final preparation games. Let's go on a quick break right now. And when we get back from it, there's still more on the show we would be talking about. Yes, you know the next one we are going to be talking about. It is about the UEFA Champions League. looks command respect they say the perfect body the perfect grooming and ultimately the perfect skin looks style and grooming makes the ultimate man found a ridiculously easy way to make my skin always feel epic. My name is Neo 
I found Blemiviv and now my skin finally makes sense. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Professional Dry Cleaners Best in dry cleaning and laundry services That meets the needs of our consumers Yeah, Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Swift Dry Cleaners Limited And quick delivery, yeah. With dry cleaners to meet Brooklyn wash and quick delivery. Swift dry cleaners. Clean wash. If you're just joining, this is the Arena right here on iBrand TV. Yes, let's talk about those stories emanating from the world of sports. Well, I guess it's what we've been doing um, for the past couple of minutes. And still in the studio with me, um, doing this with me on the show today has been uh, Andrew Shekemi. Andrew, yeah. let's talk about the Champions League, UEFA Champions League. Why nothing not? bigger than that. <laughs> not I mean, it, not nothing. Nothing. Uh, Chelsea, uh, the underdogs in that one, and it just took one month. Kai Havertz. You know, for, for a player that has been labelled a flop, it's, it's actually great to have him be the one to score the goal that would bring the Champions League back home. Mm. And why I say back home? Because I'm quite right, I'm a Chelsea yeah, fan. Yes. <laughs> I, I, mm. I'm a great player right there. Um, let, uh, let, me, let me look at um, the win of Chelsea from the angle of the coach. Talk about Thomas Tuchel. We saw this Chelsea side. It, in fact, it did look like this Chelsea side could be anywhere close to the Champions League final under Frank Lampard and then came to go uh, and it looks like the it looked like the fortunes of Chelsea changed. Yes, like um, for example looking at the Champions League, I did not expect Kovacic coming in for Mount. Um, I expected okay maybe because we have scored the goal. Manchester City yes. and he's been seeking for his next, <laughs> his next Champions League trophy uh, uh, since he left Barcelona. And it looks like that spell is still over him. It the is the fact that he's not been able to get into time in that club. Uh, but 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 do we say this is a case of the brilliance of Tuchel or just Chelsea had luck on their side, or the fact that Gadula um, this time around didn't have things work out for him like you know, um, um, aside luck, it was it was the brilliance of Tuchel, and and then um, I would fault Guardiola. I would fault it because. When I checked the um, starting lineup, I was, I know I'm not one to say this, but I was disappointed mm. because um, he just put him forwards and I don't know what he was expecting to come out from it. Maybe he wanted to um, go all out attack and then score a number of goals. Come on, you are facing a Chelsea side that, that has been um, having clean sheets for the past uh, many weeks and then you are, you are, I was, I was really disappointed. Um, he could have done better. He could have done better. Um, I think it's boiled down to the um, genius of Tuchel. Great one for him, great one for the team, and great one for the um, owner of the club. And already we are hearing that he has a likelihood of Chelsea extending his contract. Yes, why not? Why not? He, he deserves it. But but um, I would only want them to um, give him a new contract if they are ready to back him up with the players that he wants. Okay, let, let's talk about that backing of players. Uh, we are already also hearing that there are new players Chelsea might be getting, or that there are players Tuchel is... Um, signifying that he might like to have on his ranks. Uh, uh, they're not particularly calling names right now. What kind okay. of players do you actually think Chelsea at this point would need to be able to withstand the position next season? For me, I think we need a, a um, striker that can score 30 plus goals. Mm. I mean, Timo Werner is great, but then it looks like um, he lacks confidence right now. We, yes, we still need his movements in, the, um, in and around the school system. Mm. And yeah. you feel the midfield and the defense is very. Um, 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 I think defensive wise, uh, we, we could we could make do with one more person. Even in the midfield, we need a midfielder that can shoot. Chelsea needs a midfielder that can shoot, like um, the likes of Lampard, ACN, someone that has that has the um, confidence. As it is now, it's practically just Mount that shoots from outside. Kovacic, Jorginho, 
Well, they need a... a, a uh, 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 let's talk about N'Golo Kante. At this point, I know um, nobody wants to talk about Chelsea without talking about Kante. Yeah. He's been brilliant and you just cannot take it away from him. You just cannot um, stop loving the fact that Kante has been everything Chelsea needed this season. Um, is it too early to be talking about a ballon de oro for Kante at this point? Because that's what it looks like um, yeah. the talk has been about for the past couple of days. Is it too early? Or we still um, need to see more of Kante later this uh, ne later next season. Okay, um, I don't think it is too early because um, when when you are um, going for that kind of um, a um, award, a personal award, you would you would need to start um, doing whatever you want to do from the beginning of the season. And Kante has been outstanding right from the onset. He has mm -hmm. been great. He has been everywhere. Even the formation that Chelsea uses suits him because he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. He has that energy for two players. Great player right there. I, th I think he should win the Ballon d'Or. No one, no one comes close. <laughs> No one comes no one to right. It's a Chelsea fan. I wonder what you want to be hearing at this point. Okay, now let's move on and talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League. Yes, um, games went down this weekend. But before we take a look at the Nigeria Professional Football League, let me quickly um, leave you with these highlights of the game between Ayimba and Heartland FC of Ore. Yes, the game ended in a stalemate. Yeah, I know. Uh, but let's take a look at some of those interesting highlights um, from that one that went down in the city of Aba. Yes, quite an interesting one. Interesting, interesting results also from um, the Nigeria Professional Football League. Lots and lots of results um, across the weekend. Let's quickly run through that one before we talk about it um, for a few minutes. Yes, Nasara United and Adamawa United ended in a win for the Nasara United side. 1-0 was the scoreline of that one. And the one between Plato and Kando Pilas, uh, Captain Ahmed Musa in that one, but unfortunately ended in the stalemate. Lobby Stars winners over Sunshine Stars of Akure, and of course, Aqua United winners over Quara United. FC Fanyuba and Rangers International also ended in a stalemate, and MFM and Dakada FC, the one between Reimba and Heartland, which you just saw, also ended in yet another stalemate. Games will also be going down on Monday, but quickly let's take a look at what the table is looking like right now. Aqua United currently top of the table. Yes, they are sitting pretty at the top, um, and well, they will be there for a couple of days until the next match. They cannot feel us as second right now, and then Nassau United are third. Quara United are fourth, and the Rivers United who will be playing later on Monday, uh, that's later today, at uh, the make of the top five. Um, the base of the table, you get to see Wariwo, Sunshine Stars, SC Fanyuba and Adamawa United. It's not changed for lots and lots of weeks now. Uh, let's see what um, those ones will do to take themselves out of that relegation zone. But quickly in, um, just, um, Andrew, we see how the base of this table have been. Wariwo, Sunshine Stars, FC Fanyuba. And um, at, at the Mara United, do you see any of the sides escaping relegation this season? Um, I I would love for FC Ufanyumba to um, escape that because um, I believe they have what it takes to um, be, remain in the MPFL. Mm. And but they just have to prove it. It's they have to they have to not just talk the talk, but they have to do the work. Mm. FC Ufanyumba, you've heard our um, if you have to um, stay in the league this season, and join the same, you have to not just do them talk the talk, but also. Uh, do the work quickly. Let's wrap up the show talking about the super egos of Nigeria. Uh, uh, we are not going to be taking part in the World Cup qualifiers, that's because it was yeah. moved to September. But friendly game, um, this month basically, the, by the end of, of this week, and the super egos player, they're expected to be in Austria, 
um, later this week and they will be taking on um, former African champions Cameroon. Uh, a good one by the NFL to organize this big stretch, you would say. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that we can get to see the Super Eagles play again. But I, 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 talking about the um, squad that we invited, I expected to see a number of new players try them out and let's see if we can add them to the Super Eagles setup. Mm. I believe we can do better with that. We can do better with mm. that. We can do better with that. Well, you've already had that one. The Super Eagles, they will be taking on Cameroon later um, on June the 4th. That's when that one will be going. Now, we'll be talking about this one more um, when the game approaches. But for now, uh, it's just for the players to arrive right then. Austria, where that game, that friendly game against the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon would be going on. It's been a splendid time on the show today. And I would say it's been a splendid time. I'm with you and Jory. Yeah, thank you. Very Let's get to do this some other time. Yes, we maybe, should. Maybe when Chelsea gets to win. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, we are very still, soon. There's still more to be won. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for you who's been watching from wherever you are, I would say it's been wonderful having you um, join us this exciting new week. Yes, it's a new week. There will be more exciting episodes to come up um, later this week. In short, to also join us as we talk about our stories emanating from the world of sports. My name is Jidechi Chidizi and like I said, I'll definitely be back because he that fights and runs away will definitely live to fight another day. Until next time I call you we, ensure you stay safe. Bye for now.